Hey besties, it's your girl, Rasha. And I am an avid traveler who has been to over 40 countries, including 11 African nations. Recently, I solo backpacked from Southern Africa to North Africa, and it changed my life. I was also keeping an eye out for what country would be the best country for me to settle down in long term. And today, I'm going to be sharing my real raw opinion about South Africa. Africa. So let's get into it. I'm going to be covering these topics. So when I first got to South Africa, I landed in Johannesburg. And my first impression was that I loved the aesthetic. I loved the infrastructure. I loved how big the buildings were. Um, I also went to the WeWork in Johannesburg and Rosebank. And I was extremely impressed by the uh, WeWork co-working space in uh, Rosebank. And that was the first time where I was just like, okay, I'm not in Kansas anymore. Mind you, I am African-American, but I've been living abroad for over 12 years. So I was stationed, and not stationed like with the military, but I was based in Brazil. So they do have co-working spaces in Brazil, but I was living in Salvador, which is a little bit more of a... um of a more a little bit more of a slow paced low key city compared to some of the bigger cities so there was no huge co-working spaces in Salvador Brazil so when i flew to Johannesburg and i saw all these huge co-working spaces i saw Rosebank i was extremely impressed mainly because they didn't have that where i lived <laughs> So that was like my first impression. I also noticed that the transportation was very efficient and very effective. There was a lot of transportation options. They have the Metro. It just goes from Rosebank to Santon to CBD. Um, they have um, the taxis. They even have these little mini, I guess, boat cars that have like two seats in them. I had never seen anything like that before, but the rides were super cheap. And I was like, wow, like it's enough for one person and I get to save money driving in these little mini yellow cars. I don't know what to even call them, but that was pretty cool also. And I was just excited to be in Africa for the first time. I booked a tour to go to Soweto, to go to the Soweto Township. And I was really intrigued by the history. And I learned a lot about the fight that South Black South Africans have fought to liberate themselves. Um, I learned about, um, you know, the shootings in Soweto, the dog attacks, um, all of those struggles, you know, and it really touched my heart. And I really got to learn about South African history on a deeper level. And I got to connect with South Africans and really get like, <clears throat> excuse me, more of a local experience. And also when I was in South Africa, Soweto specifically, um, I had gotten a, I guess, a celebration a performance by these performers that were on the street and that was a super cool experience that was a very warm welcome to africa to south africa and i really appreciated it <laughs> My first impression was that I felt very welcomed. Many people told me, welcome to South Africa, welcome home. Even when I was at the airport, I found a taxi driver and we were just talking to each other, sharing music. I was showing him like Afro-Brazilian music and explaining the lyrics to him and he, like letting him listen to samba songs. And he was telling me about the history of music on a little bit of a deeper level than just I'm a piano. <laughs> So yes, I was really intrigued by like the conversations that I was having. I was having a lot of great conversations, mainly with like Uber drivers for some reason. Um, I liked hearing people's perspectives and it was a very warm welcome into Africa, especially South Africa for the first time. So I want to review the cities that I visited while I was in South Africa. I was backpacking through Africa for three months, and I spent the most time in South Africa. I visited, I believe, four cities, um, three or yes, four cities, which is going to be Johannesburg, 
Pretoria, Bloemfontein, and Cape Town. And my experience in Johannesburg is what I just talked about. I went to the co-working areas. I was very impressed. It was super high tech. I went to Soweto Township. I enjoyed learning about the history. The people were friendly. It was a very warm welcome. And then I went to Pretoria just for a day trip. And I enjoyed Pretoria a lot. My favorite part of Pretoria was going to the largest Nelson Mandela statue in the world. And that was just a sight for sore eyes. Like it was, it was an amazing experience. And also it started raining when I went to go see the Nelson Mandela statue. And I felt like that was a very significant moment for me because it just felt cleansing. I got caught in the rain, but it felt cleansing. And I also got some really cool photos. Um, I got some self-portraits. Mind you, I'm just getting into photography, like on a deep level. And I got a photo of lightning, photos of lightning, which I don't know if you guys are familiar, but it's very difficult to actually get photographs of lightning. But it started raining, it started lightning, and I just kept taking pictures and taking the energy in. I did get caught in the rain. All my gear was uh, safe, luckily, but it was a really magical experience. I also went to a museum. I'll put the name of it on the screen because I don't remember it off the top of my head. But it was a museum that outlined just the protest and the history of South Africa and um, also, just not South Africa, but just Africa as a whole, and even the indigenous history. And I've been on a tour at the uh, one of the museums in Pretoria, and that also meant a lot to me because I just got to learn a little bit more about indigenous African history and also the evolution of history throughout Africa, especially Southern Africa. So I really enjoyed Pretoria. I was only there for a few hours and just a day trip, but I do think that it's worth it, definitely. After I left Johannesburg, I took a bus from Johannesburg to Cape Town, which was 24 hours. It was it was a lot, but I got a sleeper bus, so my seat did go back. I had leg room, so I had snacks. So it was it was fairly comfortable. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, the 24-hour sleeper bus was no joke. Um but the bus was very um, you know, good quality. Um, I've heard mixed reviews. I'm not trying to sell anybody a fantasy, you know, do it at your own risk, but I had a good experience. <laughs> so I feel like that speaks back to the transportation in South Africa. I do think that the transportation was some of the best transportation I've seen, um, in Africa. So yes, I took the bus to Cape Town and going to Cape Town was like a very special like experience for me because even when the bus was entering into the city, I just saw all the mountains and the mountains were so gorgeous. It was miles and miles of mountains and scenery and landscape. And I just remember being like, if this is outer Cape Town, I can only imagine how beautiful it is in the actual city. So I got to Cape Town. Um, I was staying actually a ways away from the downtown area simply because I think I just found a, a cheap spot. Um... And I'm going to put the name of the city on the screen because, again, it's slipping my mind. But um, it starts with a K. And so that was about a 30-minute drive from uh, CBD. But I did, I enjoyed that area as well. It was near a beach. There were surfers. It was a very beautiful beach with, um, you know, mountains and, you know, white sands. And so it was a cool area. But it, you could tell it was just like... <clears throat> more of a sleepy village. So I went to the CBD, close to the CBD area, and I really enjoyed myself. I got some good African food, some jollof, um, and I did the red bus tour in Cape Town, <clears throat> excuse me, which I do recommend. Uh, the red bus tour just allowed me to hop on and hop off whenever I wanted to. And I got to see, you know, everything pretty much in one day. And, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Cape Town is a beautiful city. It is one of the most gorgeous cities that I've seen as somebody who's been traveling for over 12 years. It is gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I went on the cable ride, which was cool, but that was one of the most just awkward things to do as a solo traveler because everybody was there with their friends and family and it just felt like really isolating. I don't know why, but I was in the line waiting on the cable car for like nearly two hours and it was just like lonely. 
But I've never felt lonely like that in Africa. That was probably the most awkward and lonely that I felt waiting for that long uh, line, waiting for that cable ride. But the cable ride was cool. Um... It was a little bit frustrating waiting in the line for hours. Um, there, If I do go again, there are some things that I would do differently, such as maybe going earlier in the day, um, maybe bringing some music, bringing some snacks. I don't, that line was long and a little bit frustrating. And when I got to the top, like I was just so frustrated after waiting in the line for so long. I just really couldn't even enjoy it like mentally, you know? But I think it's worth it. But if you go, try to go maybe on a weekday and go early in the morning so you're like the first in line, <laughs> okay? But yes, um, what else did I do in Cape Town? I went to Hout Bay Township, which is a colored township. And I really enjoyed that tour because when I travel, I like to see the good and the bad. Um, Not necessarily even the good and the bad, but I just like to leave the tourist areas and see how the locals are living. Um, So I went on a tour. The tour was called The Ghetto Side. Well, no, what was it called? It was called in the hood of Cape Town or something like that. I'll leave the link for you guys in the description because I'm actually still cool with the guy today, but it was just called in the hood, you know, of Cape Town. And I was like, I want to go to the hood and see what's going on. Let me just book this tour. So I went to the Cutler Township of Hout Bay and it was quite the intriguing experience. Um, I really enjoyed the experience because he shared stories of how they were fighting against colonization, how the government was trying to, um, um, basically eradicate his community to sell the land because the community is next to a very gorgeous body of water that is also a fisherman's area, which is how they make their living. And they had to fight for their land because the government was trying to push them out so they can sell their land to billionaires, right? And it was intriguing listening to his story. Um, they created their own garden. They created their own tight-knit community. They basically came to an agreement as a community that they weren't going to fight with each other. They have to work together to build, right? So that was I, I'm really grateful for that experience because I got to see Cape Town on a deeper level outside of just the touristy beaches and, you know, just the beauty that is kind of just like manufactured in the tourist areas. So, yes, I really enjoyed Cape Town um, and I highly recommend it. Um, it's gorgeous. There's a lot of history. And if you want to see more of a realistic township that the locals are living in, um, especially as Black South Africans and colored South Africans, I do recommend the tour that I'm going to link in the bio. So the next city that I went to was Bloemfontein. And Bloemfontein was just more of a residential family town area. Um, there's no, there's not a lot of touristy things, but I think Bloemfontein really is just a town that people maybe move to or live in to take care of their families and raise their children. That's the kind of vibe that I got. The only reason I went to Bloemfontein was because it was two hours from Lesotho. It was just a connection that I made on the way to Lesotho. So Bloemfontein, it was what it was. I went to the mall um, and that's about it. <laughs> so yes, uh, those are just all the city that I went to. I am disappointed that I wasn't able to go to Durban. Durban is still on my list, but there's always next time. So now I'm going to go a little bit more in depth about the pros and the cons that I personally experienced in South Africa. I would say the biggest pro for me was just the infrastructure of the buildings. A lot of the buildings were super high tech and also the transportation was really well put together and high tech, especially in Johannesburg and Cape Town, um, which I was very impressed with because again, the things that I saw in Johannesburg didn't even exist where I was living. So it was, it looked better than where I was living <laughs> at the time. So yes, I was impressed with that. And also um, opportunities, like job opportunities. I was only in South Africa for about three weeks, but I encountered a lot of people, a lot of creatives that were excited to meet me. I was excited to meet with them. Um, I even got a job opportunity uh, when I was in South Africa to collaborate with someone that was trying to boost their digital marketing. I have a digital marketing marketing agency. So that was good. Um, and I was only there for three weeks. 
So I can already tell that there's so many job opportunities. There's huge potential. There's so many, just even like, uh, you can build communities of other creatives. I met animators, videographers, you know, just so many different types of creatives, which I was really just excited to meet. And this was mainly in Johannesburg. So if you're a creative and you just want to collaborate, even work with people, maybe get mentorship, I highly recommend Johannesburg. And I met most of these people at WeWork in Rosebank. So you just got to maybe check out a co-working spot, um, network, and there's a lot of amazing people that are super nice and would probably be super happy to work with you. So that's one thing that I love about Johannesburg also. And oh, yes, also the surrounding countries. One thing that I love about South Africa is how many countries that it's connected to. It's connected to Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, I believe a little bit of Mozambique, Eswatini, and Lesotho, which is crazy. Like, and it's a coastal country, so it still has access to some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Like, that's, I highly recommend South Africa and I can definitely understand why people move there and why people say it is one of the most beautiful countries in the world because even if you want to travel there's at least six or seven countries that you can travel to surrounding South Africa without even having to like you know go far at all which is like something that I was also very impressed with um the surrounding countries are also some of the most beautiful countries in the world especially like Namibia and uh, Zimbabwe which has a Victoria Falls. So that's another pro that I think I haven't seen to that extent in any other country. Of course, there are countries that are connected to other countries, but I think South Africa does have the most diversity when it comes to being connected to other countries, other beautiful countries. So let's get into the cons, okay? Now, this is just my raw opinion. I'm, you know, I keeps it real, okay? But the biggest con for me would be the danger. Nothing happened to me negatively. I didn't get robbed or stolen from. I also know how to use my street smarts. I've been traveling for over 12 years. So I know how to stay safe. Generally, I have street smarts. I lived in Chicago for four years. So dangerous cities are nothing new to me. Street smarts is nothing new to me. But I think the thing that kind of shook me the most was how many South Africans warned me about South Africa. When I was in South Africa, I literally got like dozens of warnings from South Africans telling me to be safe, telling me to be careful, telling me not to trust anybody. Like I literally got told like 10 times, don't trust anybody in South Africa. Don't trust anybody. Don't trust anybody. Don't trust anybody. I'm just like, dang, like... It got to the point where I felt like I couldn't even enjoy the country to the full extent because every time I turned around, somebody was telling me, don't trust anybody, don't trust anybody, don't trust anybody, don't trust anybody, don't trust anybody. And I was like, okay, I get it, damn. Like, I'm using my street smarts, but it does kind of dampen your experience when and I, again, I understand people had the best intentions and were trying to help keep me safe, but it did dampen my experience when I got several warnings of how dangerous South Africa, South Africa is by South Africans and dozens of South Africans telling me to never trust anybody in South Africa. And so that's what kind of shook me a little bit um, more so than what I experienced. Nothing happened to me. I didn't get, you know, robbed or stolen from or anything, but I appreciate the South Africans that went out of their way to warn me but it was a little excessive in my opinion. Like, it was excessive. That's all I'm going to say about that. Which leads me into my next point, the jealousy. Um, I did encounter a couple of people. I had some personal experiences of people that made it clear that they basically wanted what I had and they felt some type of way, you know, I guess about the privilege that I have, which... Jealousy is a normal human emotion, of course, but it did kind of take me aback a little bit. I've never had people be so forward about being angry that they didn't have what I had. I had, for example, when I was in Hout Bay, which is a colored township, 
there, there was a colored South African who told me, like, oh, like, I wish I could travel like you. Like, I want to go to Europe. Like, you know, and he just had an attitude about it. Why are you angry at me? Why are you telling me, like, oh, I wish I could travel like you? And I even told him, I was like, have you ever been to any of the other countries around South Africa? And he's like, no, like, I want to go to Europe. Like, I wish I could go to Europe. I wish I could leave like you. And I was like, okay. I'm starting to feel a little uncomfortable, but he was angry. Like, he was like, oh, I wish I could travel, like, you know, type of attitude. And I feel for him. I empathize with him, but it was a little strange experiencing that level of jealousy. Um, also, when I was in South Africa, um, Johannesburg, I ran into a group of Ghanians. I was walking into my hotel and they were walking in and... There was just a Ghanaian. He was, he heard my accent, you know, he spoke, he heard my accent. He's like, oh, and he made fun of my accent, but it was like a lighthearted joke. But then he just kind of made like an off comment of like, oh, I wish I was you. And I was just like, oh, because I, I have an American accent because I'm American. He just made a comment like, oh, I wish I was you. And I was like, okay. I didn't really know what to say. I don't know what people really expect me to say in situations like that, because <laughs> let's not forget about the 400 years of slavery that my people went through. Let's not forget about 400 years of slavery and oppression that we had to fight through and liberate ourselves from. Like, I understand that the United States has a lot of opportunities and a lot of people idolize the United States, but my people suffer too. My people had to fight to liberate themselves too. So it's like, what do you really want me to say when, you know, what do you want me to say? That's basically how I feel. Like, what do you want me to say? My people have struggled too. So I, that's all I got to say about it. <laughs> But yes, the last thing is load shedding. Um, I don't really feel like I was extremely affected by load shedding. And even when I did experience load shedding, it didn't negatively like affect my life or ruin my life or anything. But I did experience load shedding a few times. And I think load shedding, which I do understand that some people in townships and um, in less privileged areas do have very bad water insecurity and electricity insecurity excuse me but um even when i even where i was living i had about maybe 4 or 5 hours of load shedding every day and you can kind of plan around it like for the most part um in some neighborhoods and some situations you can plan around it so i just kind of learned to plan around it but i do think that the load shedding you know, it is a very big factor, especially for people in townships. Um, so that is another uh, con for me. So let's get into dating. This is just a category that I'm going to be including in every one of these type of videos, talking about my experiences, whether I have dating experience in that country or not. <sighs> But yeah, in uh, South Africa, I spent over three weeks there and I didn't go on any dates. I wasn't in the mind frame. Um, I'm going to make another video about like kind of what was happening in my life prior to my tour through Africa, but I had just gotten out of a relationship and I was heartbroken. I was healing and a relationship was the last thing on my mind. I wasn't even thinking about hookups. I wasn't thinking about anything I was heartbroken, okay? So I was not dating in South Africa, but um, it was interesting. That was my first impression of getting a taste of how dating culture kind of is in Africa in general, because it's interesting how many people feel comfortable telling women that they need to get pregnant and have a have a baby and have a family. I had multiple men tell me that I need to marry a Zulu man or I need to marry and have kids. And it's just like, it was a culture shock for me because I don't think about marriage. You know, I'm not at this point in my life, I'm almost 30, but I'm not desperate for marriage. I'm not desperate for a baby. I genuinely enjoy my life and I desire to be married one day, but I'm not desperate, you know? 
but it seems like some people feel like my my clock is running out but I don't think my clock is running out anytime soon. So it's just like, you know, it's just a culture shock for me. And I could see a lot of cultural differences, um, especially men's reactions when I tell them that I am genuinely happy with my life and I'm not ready for kids or marriage. Like, and I'm definitely not going to rush it. I'm definitely not desperate for it. Um, so that was kind of my first introduction into the cultural differences. Um, you know, from maybe Western culture to African culture. Um, but I didn't go on any dates because I was heartbroken. I did, you know, I guess interact <laughs> with some people, like, I guess flirt a little bit with some people, but I was heartbroken. What do you want me to say? <laughs> All right. So the next question is, would I live in South Africa? So yes, I think that South Africa is a beautiful country with a lot of amazing potential. Um, but for me, I don't think that it's for me right now because mainly I have a dog. I was researching the qualifications to uh, immigrate to South Africa but South Africa is extremely strict when it comes to pet importation. And I have a pet and it, it just wasn't feasible. It wasn't possible for me to import my dog. I did a lot of research. I contacted a lot of people, but it's just not possible for me to import my dog. So I can't give up my dog just to move to an, another country, you know, when there's hundreds of countries, well, not hundreds, but dozens of countries that I can move to and actually keep my dog, you know, even in Africa, there's countries I can move to and keep my dog. <laughs> so that's the main thing that deterred me from moving to South Africa. Also, I actually did apply for a long-term residency in South Africa and it got denied. And when I asked them why I got denied, the government didn't even give me a reason. And I was just like, okay, rejection is protection. It's just time for me to move on. I don't know why my visa got denied, but I really do believe strongly that rejection is protection. So I decided to, you know, scratch it off of my list for now. But I would love to maybe see what happens in the future because I do think South Africa is an amazing country. It is a gorgeous country with so much potential, so many opportunities. The people are friendly. The weather is like just up my alley. And I think it is an amazing country to move in, even though it's not for me right now. So just to wrap it up, my final thoughts about South Africa is that it is an amazing country. I pretty much just said my final thoughts, but just to wrap up the conclusion, um, there's so much diversity. I've been to several cities and it's just so many surrounding countries that you can also travel to. There's just so much potential. There's so much beauty. There's so many friendly, welcoming people. It is the first country that I've been to in Africa, and I got a very warm welcome during my experience. I was already working with people. I was already networking and meeting other creatives that worked in the same field as me. It has the beauty. It has the business opportunities, the networking opportunities. and it is the first country that I went to where I was just like, whoa, Africa is the future. Like traveling through South Africa for three weeks really convinced me that Africa is the future. And that is why I'm repatriating to Africa. And I'm currently looking for my happy place now because I was so impressed by what I saw in South Africa. And it really reminded me that Africa is the future. And I want to be a part of this growth and this upward movement that's happening in Africa. So please comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think below. And I hope you enjoyed. Until next time.